Welcome to this series of lectures in medicine. My name is Dr. Lucy. We will put links in the description below so that you can check our other videos in medicine. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the disorders of the pituitary gland. So our objectives today is to describe the overview of the pituitary gland in terms of the function, the anatomy and the location. And then we will go over to the conditions of over or under activity of the pituitary. And some of the things that we will talk about today is gigantism, acromegaly, which are over secretion of the hormones of the pituitary. And then go to, on to discuss dwarfism, which is the under secretion of the hormones of the pituitary. And in these three conditions, we will talk about the etiology, the presentation, investigations, complications, and then prognosis. It is a pea-sized gland that is located at the base of the brain at the bony enclosure with the name Cella tussica. Its main function is to produce hormones that go to affect other tissues either negatively or positively but is itself regulated by hormones from the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus produces five stimulating hormones to the pituitary and two inhibitory hormones to the pituitary. So the pituitary gland has two lobes, the anterior and the posterior. The anterior has several hormones and the posterior stores two hormones from the hypothalamus that is oxytocin and the antidiuretic hormone. So this basically is the regulation of the pituitary from the hypothalamus through the stimulating and inhibitory hormones which then go into the pituitary and the pituitary produces other hormones to several glands. Uh, in this picture it shows just adrenal cortex but there are several hormones that several glands that the pituitary affects with its hormones hormone production so let us now move on into the disorders of the pituitary gland and in this we will talk about the over secretion and the under secretion so if we look at the anterior pituitary uh, we, we have a gigantism acromegaly and then Cushing syndrome and Cushing syndrome is in brackets because this is really from the adrenal cortex although the problem may be coming all the way from the pituitary and then we have hyperactivity which is dwarfism due to decreased production of the growth hormone from the posterior pole uh, the posterior pituitary we have the syndrome of inappropriate hypersecretion of antidiuretic hormone and then we also have diabetes insipidus of course there are so many other conditions that would come because of either overactivity or hyperactivity but we will not go into details so to start us off let's look at gigantism this is a pituitary disorder characterized by excess growth of the body and average height of these affected patients is between seven to eight feet the main cause of course is the hypersecretion of growth hormone in childhood and pre adult and this is mainly before the closure of epiphyseal plate uh, as the person is growing but after the uh, closure of the epiphyseal plates then we get something else totally different and that is acromegaly there could also be a tumor of acidophilic cells of the anterior pituitary and therefore leading to over secretion of the growth hormone so on signs and symptoms these people grow into a huge stature of seven to eight feet in height normally um, the normal human being is about five if you get to six then you are quite tall but between five to five point five that is a normal weight of an adult man and at the same time these people present with hyperglycemia and develop glycosuria and then develop pituitary diabetes mellitus the other presentation is that these patients tend to get headaches because of the tumors if the cause of this condition is tumors and then 
they also get visual disturbances the main reason being that the cellar to seeker where the pituitary gland is is just below the optic chiasma that the optic chiasma and the optic chiasma as basically the fibers that control the visual system uh, in sometimes we find that gingantism also ends up with hypopituitarism where there is a reduction of the hormones of the pituitary this picture just shows a giant compared to to the normal when you look at it you think the person who is uh, small is the abnormal one but actually the person the but actually the bigger one is the giant and who has gigantism so what happens in the long bones is that the epiphyseal growth plates con continues to grow over the years and if growth hormone is not controlled before the puberty then this person will continue having the growth of these of these bones until they reach such a big stature of seven to eight feet so normally growth hormone is required for proper growth and development and also directly affect fat metabolism but it also indirectly affects the bone growth so pituitary gingantism is, a, is caused by excess secretion of growth hormone prior to the closure of epiphyseal growth plates in the long bones and this as i said must occur before the onset of puberty if it does occur after that then we get something else like what you can see in this picture this is acromegaly so what happens here is that it is just the tissues that increase in size in this picture specifically you can see the the, the jaw is quite big compared to the rest of the structures of the face this is a picture of a 12 year old boy with is a, is a 6 feet 5 inches with his mother and uh, you can see the comparison the mother looks like a small girl in comparison to him on the left you see his hand in comparison to that of a grown man with 6, six feet so basically his tissues are quite big his bones are quite big all the long bones in the body are affected and these were affected before the closure of the epiphyseal growth plates so how do you test and how do you diagnose gingantism gingantism is not a heritable disorder therefore there is no prenatal testing so if someone is pregnant and wants to know whether they may get a child with gingantism that is not possible then after birth, initial growth is not necessarily exaggerated, but with time, that becomes more apparent as the size of the child increases very fast compared to its counterparts. The blood works is possible to test the circulating levels of growth hormone, on growth hormone although this may not be completely tell you the whole story. Uh, computer tomography or CT scans and MRI is available to look for any primary any uh, pituitary tumors as you can see in this picture so how do you treat gingantism it is very it is a uh, this disorder is a developmental in nature therefore treatment is very difficult because growth hormone continually surges from the pituitary increasing the body size However, this can be removed uh, surgically just to decrease its size and stop the production of the growth hormone. There are also some drugs that can be given including bromocryptin to block the growth hormone effects. At the same time, radiation can be given to reduce or to treat the tumor to stop the production of the growth hormone. In conclusion, we have discussed the pituitary and how it is controlled by the hypothalamus. We have also mentioned some conditions due to hyper or hypofunction of the pituitary. In this session, we have discussed gingantism. You can review the hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus to control the pituitary. So that concludes this session on disorders of the pituitary and specifically gingantism. 
We will put links below so that you can access the other medicine videos. Do subscribe so that you can get an alert every time that we do upload the videos. Till next time, stay safe.